the time out of your schedule today to come join us. Um, really do appreciate that. And if we could, I'd like to start off with a pledge and, uh, and a prayer for you. Would you join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you want me Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to gather here today. God, we ask for you to uh, guide our thoughts and our actions and, and our discussion here today. Help us be all uh, uh, ever mindful of uh, the sacrifice that you that you provided for us. Uh, help us all to be um, servant leaders. We ask these things in your name. Amen. <clears throat> We have one of all commissioners. Appreciate everyone coming out here today. It's a beautiful facility. I think it's the first time that the this body has been out here. Has government been out here before? Oh, yeah. Commissioners? Okay. It's been at least four years you've been here. So. Well, the commissioner's definitely out Okay. But, um, you know, back about 10 years ago, um, we were looking at the fact that the Air Force was uh, an economic impact for Cleveland County not just the shelter itself. So that's when we decided to partner. Yeah. Uh, as Eddie was coming in, we remember the way it used to be when the oars were here. It was the old brick building, bathrooms on one end, and then a little desk on this end. And his storage facility was boxes, carton stacked to the ceiling. Uh -huh. And we had the governor come to make an announcement. <laughs> we couldn't get about 25 people in here. Oh. And um, uh, then this was the city of Shelton's vision to uh, start a plan uh, and to rework the airport. Uh, they're buying up properties all around the airport, you know, to make it uh, a little more viable for people who don't like, you know, always just trying to get out. They fenced it. Uh, the um, taxiways have been reinforced for larger airports. <coughs> this is probably, uh, and from experience, one of the nicest runways anywhere. I mean, I mean, bar shop, you know. But uh, uh, it's a beautiful place to. No, it is. Place to be. I think um, Stan did a great job designing it, and like I say, we visited different places to try to get some input. But uh, the airport advisory board and the city of Shelby, I don't think you can ask for a better place. Mm -hmm. I would tell Eddie too, uh, pilots can come in, they come in on this side, and they got a code they can get in at night, and then they got a bed, they got uh, showers, they got uh, all the electronics they need to uh, get the weather. Uh, your like, uh, fueling station. I'm talking? Your fueling station. And the only thing that I've got a little against that part is, and I can't understand it, but uh, there's more fires than me to, to look at. But why in the world they put the helicopter landing site right next to the fueling station. I mean, I know you can get the line to the helicopter and refuel them, but if something were to happen to the helicopter on landing right there at the refueling station. But anyway, that's not the thing I've ever pushed them on, but they've done a great job. Yeah. Well, we definitely appreciate the them working with us today to be able to have a meeting out here. So this is a, it's, it's good to be out here to see something that's so involved with the with economic development for the county. Um, what today's meeting is, is basically um, is over the last several months, the commissioners have brought up different topics to, to staff and, and they've been keeping a running list and this is an opportunity for us to talk about some of those topics, kind of catch up on our, um, on our goals, um, do an update of the commissioner goals, um, also talk about um, the goals for the county staff as well. Um, but they, um, um, County Manager and, and Carrie both they, they led the staff in um, looking at goals and, and seeing how they correlate and it's neat to look at their goals and see how they correlate to to the commissioner's goals as well. So this is truly meeting for, for us just to have a, a good round table discussion and what we've got um, basically is if, if you brought something up or if you were one of the people that brought something up, um, we've kind of got your name side of it and y'all can lead the discussion on that section. And, We'll just jump into it and start off the, the first topic that we're looking at is um, uh, future vision for economic development and 
Susan, we've got your name beside that if you want to. Of course, I mean, this is just a discussion time, basically. First, I want to commend Kristen Nibru. <laughs> Thank you very much for what you've done here with and leading us and taking good charge in the last few years on economic development. Um, I guess one of the, the topics, one of the reasons that I was interested in this topic is that um, we've had some challenges going from Tier 1 to Tier 2. And um, you know, of course we've had a few, a few challenges recently with a, you know, a couple of um, companies we thought we might get to come, come to town um, and bring their business here. But the one thing that I guess that we've been very successful, when we jumped right in the forerunner for all the other counties in North Carolina. And I think we led a great example for all of them. And I feel like that they're, they're learning by our example. Um, I mean, I know that's not the only reasons that some of them are, are getting some of the businesses that we bid on as well that are not bid on that we try for, to get to come to the county. But, you know, I think it'd be a good idea for us to get some ideas, uh, start thinking of what we can do different. We've been different, and what can we do different now than what we were in the past? Um, as leaders, it seems that people, when they come in, they start saying, well, they've done a good job. How did you do it? And what did you do? And then they go back and take, take what they want, that, the wheels that we created, and start taking them back to their own hometown and start doing them. So I, I guess I'd like everybody to start thinking, you know, what can we do different to be, be the second the leader again? Um, and start, you know, is there collaboration that we need to do? Is there anything that you guys need from the county commissioners? Um, you know, is, is there a, different, a new industry we need to start targeting? Um, a new way that we present our package? I know that, um, you know, as, as far as what we can offer. So I'm just kind of throwing those things out to everyone to see if anybody has any thoughts on what we can start doing different, especially with the being a tier two has is, is, is made a big difference and it's something we're, we're, we have to live with and deal with. And, um, start. Yeah, we get punished for being Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I, I guess just a comment I got. I, I talked to uh, Commissioner Holbrook and uh, David and Christian. And uh, I guess it's my understanding our, our tactics and our means that we've approached it is still good. Okay? That we still have some good tools in our toolbox, even though we lost a few. That our major setback has been with the state. That the, am I correct in what I'm saying? And I'm not taking, trying to, to speak for you, but understand that uh, the last couple of jobs we lost, our package at the county was up front. Nobody could beat us on it. But when it came down to the state, then we lost it. You want to elaborate on that? You know, I, I think Kristen can be probably more specific, but we, uh, I think, County put together a heck of a package on at least the two that I'm most familiar with. And I mean, we even had the client to sit across the table and tell us in pretty straight language, our, the county package, we shouldn't do any more than what we were doing. It was certainly adequate. Um, and it was pretty creative in some instances, but it was nothing that was going to break the bank, so to speak, but it was a good aggressive package. But we got wiped out by the state. Uh, South Carolina and what they brought to the table through the governor and her participation in the process herself, personally, um, just kicked, kicked us under the bus. Uh, now what, what they did Kristen may know precisely what they did better than I do, but the terms that they used was, well, the state packages aren't even comparable. So it, it, it's pretty cut and dried uh, right now, uh, unless commerce, more specifically the state, gets commerce organized or gets private public partnership organized. Uh, 
it's hard for a county to compete against the state. And that's what we were doing, or that's what we've done almost in the last two. But Cleveland County can't compete against the state of South Carolina. And it, it's, it's been pretty much a disaster according to what we were told last week. There are some proposals in the new budget which is being discussed and negotiated that will help put more tools in the box, so to speak, for the state. But until that budget's passed, we still got, I don't know if that's one arm, it's almost two arms mm -hmm. uh, tied behind us. And, and another real crucial factor was just learning in the last month or so, some of the brokers who were working for the state that are extremely competent, years of experience, uh, that we had formed relationships with, have been let go. So the, that sort of breaks the line of negotiation and discussing issues when projects are brought into the state and you don't have a direct line of communication going with a broker that's that you're familiar with and she know does a real good job. But Kristen probably needs to elaborate a little more specifically. I'll be glad to add some flavor. Um, I think first of all this board should be committed on I mean you guys have absolutely raised the bar and set the set the standard um, in the state of North Carolina just from a economic development project management standpoint um, and just from by the way that the board thinks outside of the box we act very aggressively from project inception throughout the duration of the project um, we have been told as Eddie mentioned time and time again from consultants that are representing these economic development projects that that our package is aggressive it's concise it's well put together uh, we respond effective, effectively, immediately, comprehensively with the RFPs that we that we respond to um, when we're uh, initially responding on the project. Um, we get conti we continue to get, receive good feedback relative to those factors. Um, we time and time again become the finalist in the state of North Carolina for very large economic development projects. We have worked on some very very some of the nation's largest projects over the last. Um, eight years and unfortunately we've seen the overall pot within the state of North Carolina the financial incentive spot shrink and there are certain caps that we see that are on these um, very important financial incentives for instance the JDEG there's a there's a legis there's a legislative cap there um, so we don't have the flexibility when we get to that that final spot when we're negotiating against other southeastern states to really uh, obtain the, the increase that we need from the state due to that legislative cap. So there's some inflexibility there. I know the state is currently examining um, some possibilities. Um, I believe there's some legislative, uh, there's some legislation in place for a potential deal closing, a closing fund that they're looking at creating that would give us hopefully some more leverage there. Um, states like Texas have, have had a closing fund like this for years. Um, and then, as Eddie mentioned, what's a very important factor to consider is um, related to the state's economic development efforts and how they actually interact and interface with those clients when they're looking at our state. And South Carolina is an excellent example. Uh, Governor Haley, I know, is highly engaged in those efforts um, from the very first breakfast meeting throughout the project. Um, that's a very meaningful interaction. When it when it comes to, to working an economic development project, it is um, it, it is very much a contributing factor, I think, um, to a client or a company making that emotional connection to a state or to a community. And you guys have that down pat. We have that interaction. We have that 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 support locally. Um, but we're hoping to see the state step up their efforts and become more engaged from the very first time that client steps foot um, into the state. But uh, you know, moving from a tier one to a tier community, um, it's given us higher thresholds that we must meet relative to the employees that are tied to the financial incentives. Um, 
So, but in reality, once we get to that point where we're the finalist in the state of North, North Carolina, we're negotiating with other states that technically those tier status, the tier status should come off at that point, where we have the, the flexibility and the, the, the room for <coughs> negotiating those financial incentives. Um, the tier structure was created so the communities within North Carolina could have more of an even playing field when they were all actively working on projects. So, um, when you get to the final two or three, normally the tier status is not as important as it is when you're going through the preliminary. That's right. Uh, but Kristen mentioned something that's very much of a, a factor. A good many of the governors in the states that we compete with have closing funds that they have access to that the governor can become a, a more vital part mm -hmm. in closing the deal because they have opportunities on their desk that they can throw into the equation that the North Carolina governor has not had in the past. And if this budget goes through as it, the governor should have some of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And we have to be very careful because, you know, <laughs> the last thing we need to do during all this process, even though we don't want to create enemies between Cleveland County and Raleigh. I mean, we got to maintain um, a harmonious working relationship or it puts us further behind the eight ball. So we, we don't want to burn bridges uh, in communicating with Raleigh. We just have to try to be honest and straight and say, say to them in a kosher manner as possible what, what we feel like is the problem without turning opposite direction from Cleveland County is a delicate issue. Mm -hmm. I think one of, the, <clears throat> one of the things I'd like to say about it is, I mean, we, we do have, I think we have an excellent relationship with our local delegation in Raleigh, and they're 100% supportive of our effort here, and they want to know from, and I'm not trying to put words in their mouth, but I, I know they have, um, they're, they're looking at ways of trying to help fix the problem with um, Raleigh and, and at the state level. Um, so I think we've got we've got great relationships there. Um, I know they're open to innovative uh, approaches toward economic development, and I know we are as well. Um, what, one of the positives I'll take out of this is I think we've got the right people in place. We've got the right opportunities. We've got the right uh, um, resources here when when Raleigh is fixed um, we ought to be in, in really good shape um, to, to, to compete we can't do much about what South Carolina is doing right now but when when North Carolina is fixed we ought to be in really good shape to compete it's uh, if you sit where we sit uh, it's just a total flip of the coin with the coin landing on the opposite side the way commerce operates now versus the way it's operated up to the last what, year and a half, two years. They were so much more engaged. You had a face of a commerce secretary who was involved personally in projects and who communicated <coughs> with the county personally with project directors and things. You don't have that now. Uh, and I don't know whether it's taken them longer to try to change structure within commerce, but as Jason said it well, until they get it changed and get it fixed, uh, we're going to continue to have some dilemma, I'm afraid. <clears throat> Talking about the vision for economic development, and this conversation has gone on for a long time. Um, I'm probably the only sitting member of this board who uh, remembers, I mean, not remember, but I was involved with when uh, we had an economic development director. Uh, they had an assistant and we had an economic development advisor board. And out of that, we uh, have been looking at ways to involve the general public because. We think they had uh, a buy-in to uh, growing uh, industry here. 
And also, it was our opinion at that time, I believe it was Mark Carter, who was one of the big ones that was helping me. And um, we put together the group 2020. And um, there were some contentious years uh, after 2020. But the thing about it is, is that um, we had to recognize that we did not have enough funds just to go out and do economic development on our own, that we needed to have some partners, and that was like the hospital and the bank. And at the beginning, there were a number of individuals who uh, bought into it, especially like your realtors and all who um, were hoping to get first-hand information about a company coming or something. Um, I still believe that 2020 is one of the best organizations that we have and you as our representative on 2020. And the city of King Mountain, the city of Shelby, Forest Springs, Forest Springs, um, that um, it's time to, we can't change the yes, that's, that's work in progress, but we really need to reorganize 2020. Uh, it's my opinion is that we don't need to be under the umbrella of the chamber. We're giving them funds to kind of run the 2020 organization when we should be having uh, 2020 uh, getting the local people who still help us buy in economic development, uh, Christian being the president of that organization maybe, and then answering directly to the county manager. Uh, while we got that extra little bobble in there, I do know that we set it up that way because we had to have a 5013C at the time to get the local monies. But we can do that ourselves without that third partner in there. It's my opinion that uh, with the economic development team we have now in 2020 can, can do the wrong thing. Uh, we just don't need uh, a third party involved in it. Uh, I think the chamber is designed to do its one thing. In 2020, uh, it was designed to be So <clears throat> I know that probably don't fit well with a lot of people, but it's time that we, we look at it. Uh, I don't want to go back to this part where we just had an economic development director answering straight to the county manager uh, because what we've done, or what we would do, is lose all the public money that is being put in economic development. That's a considerable amount of money. Um, I, I hate to lose any of those partners, so I think the 2020 is still the way to go. It just needs to be uh, under a different leadership. I would, uh, and, and I appreciate your comments. Uh, I know there's been some discussion about uh, 2020. Um, the direction, how it's set up. Um, we're, we're not we're not planning on taking any action on anything today at this meeting. It's a work session, so it's really for discussion. But what we could maybe do is ask the staff to, if, if we could look at um, the economic development. I know there have been some, um, the chamber has been working on um, their relationship with 2020 now, um, and maybe we can get a report back from them. And, and so we, can, act, we actually sought them out and involved them in it because of 5013C. But all the economic development effort is made by uh, people who are answering to the chamber president, and to me, they should be answering to. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I know ch the chamber's uh, job is to go out and promote uh, the county, and it doesn't mean they can't still be at the table when the economic interests come. But on the everyday thing, these people don't need to be reporting to the president of the chamber about something that they already done all the work on. It, it needs to be with our representative. It needs to be with our people that we basically are paying. I think uh, oh, I certainly don't disagree with you. I think the chamber is working now through Jeff. I think they've found some uh, 
potholes in the bylaws and so forth, which did not address what you're talking about. And I, I think Jeff and uh, Chamber people are working, they're probably going to come back with some suggestions and recommendations on the bylaws that would, I think, bring what you're talking about to the forefront because that, that has been a problem, there's no question. I, I honestly just do not believe that we need to have the Chamber President in negotiations with economic development. Um, not saying they can't be part of it, they shouldn't be the ones that right. our people go and have to get their walking right. papers from. It, it should be people who are really uh, involved in it. And um, I, mean, I, I hate it. I know I, I was there when I was in, I was there when we had just the EDC director. I was there and when I fought to the L and I mean, it, it really got contentious when we started developing twenty twenty. Bylaws were revamped several different times. Uh, there were some factions in there, but the whole part of 2020 is bringing public dollars to economic development, not just using uh, county funds. I would suggest that you know maybe Jeff can give us an update on some of the discussions they've had. That, that just just my opinion. I, I want to elaborate one other thing on what. Too. I think sort of correlated to what Kristen said is hard. One of the things you can always look for other ways of doing business and evaluating things. I think that's a constant and you should always be looking for ways to improve. And this is all the situation we're all in on most mandates at right now. I think one of the things that we're looking at doing, I think Kristen and David have seen that probably it's more advantageous for us right now to pursue the smaller projects you know, where we can be more competitive, where the state is not that major a player. Secondly, I think jump out of the box just a little bit more, there are more, there are more than one way to have economic development and just the recruiting of manufacturers or things of that nature is, is the way that most people think of as being economic development. And it's true it is, but there's other ways. And I think you, you see some of the things Greenwood see, does, has done, and you see that. Uh, the gun ranch is going to be another perfect example of the regionalism that that thing will have with people coming in, uh, spending nights, generating, spending dollars, increasing retail revenues. The thing that softball tournament did this past weekend. I'm just using those as a couple of examples. So I'm saying maybe while we are sort of in the uh, twilight zone of working things out and the state getting Department of Commerce fixed the way they want it fixed. We need to really concentrate on these other these other things too. The other areas that do generate revenue for the county is just a different way that it's generated. See, it is just a minute, just a little bit. I mean, it's not the right place now. It's still economic development. Uh, Johnny and I attended a veteran meeting, and when we get down to it, I want to share with you something about economic impact. Yeah. Just, just a comment on what you said. I was also on the commission with Dr. South and went through this 2020 partnership process and the development we knew over the years has got to change. But, you know, my question is, you said we're going to direct staff. Staff should be Eddie and Jeff. You know, we, need, we need to make that clear so they didn't know what staff wanted to, to bring us suggestions back. But, I've looked at this thing over the last month or so, and I'm not so sure to me now that I want 2020 directly on the county because if you look at it, there are certain things and certain benefits you get if they're not directly with us. When they fall under the county, the county government, that changed the whole perspective of a certain group, how to report, 
what information is public, what information is not, they're the whole new realm. But I think there should be something out there that if we want to still part of the chamber, there should be a dual department type deal. Okay, you've got this 2020 department, they go this route, chamber goes this route. Our people, then they coordinate back and report back some, some sort of system that we've got now. But, uh, what? Like I said, I'm having, I guess I'm having hindsight, you know, looking back. Is, is that is it really what we need to do? Well, I think what Jeff and I have been privy to so far, and we don't have a conclusion on, is just, it, it, it sort of addresses what you and Ronnie both are talking about. We still want to utilize 2020. But how do you how do you structure everything to where economic you, you're able to utilize 2020 in the chamber, but county manager and economic development has a priority position in the negotiations and the discussions on economic development. I think that's sort of what you're and that's sort of a sticky thing right now. That I mean I know Jeff's had two or three meetings and we're trying to massage that thing and fix it to where we can come back with something black and white so you can look at it and think about it. Yeah. Would, would it be, uh, I mean, would this meet your expectations if, if, if we were to um, ask <coughs> staff, Eddie, on the Ed Gotham Development and, and Jeff, as well as um, Chamber, to give us a uh, Basically, a summary of where they're at now, what they what what they think that that would fix, that would meet both your 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 um, goals and your objectives, and meet your yours as well. Well, I, I think and, like and say, I, I, I think us. everybody understand what I'm saying there. That you know, there's certain benefits by having it there, and we need to make sure that those benefits don't go away. Our, away. Don't our go relationship away. with the chamber is, is extremely important. I think everybody at the table would say that well, the not chamber is extremely that, but there are certain laws, rules, and regulations that we want to get them. We can get the best of both worlds, and let's go after it. Let's not lose what we got. Right. Yeah. Well, if, if, we, if lost, if we lost the good bit. Yeah. I, I think what you're saying, what you, I think what you're saying is Eddie can get with Jeff, and they can come up with something. And, he can bring us, we can bring us a report by. We just look to be the rest of the day. We're, we're not too far away from that now. No. We've been talking about this, this on and off again for oh, yeah. years, yeah. especially when some problems come up um, about who answers to who. And, you know, um, I just, I, I'm sorry, I just don't say, and I know why we did it. And the 501 3 there may be a time that the chamber needs to look at what they're doing, and if we're going to stay with them, have two different people. We, we can have the economic development role that report to whoever the chamber reports to them, then our person reports back to us, basically <sighs> something similar to that. Yeah, as far as the timeline goes, um, I would like to see something done about this and a definitive answer of what we're going to do before they have a new. They said a new chamber president. I think that's the I think that's the direction that would be real helpful would be a timeline because we're we're closing in on the end of July, and um, I know the chamber is actively recruiting a new president. I don't know how much longer that's going to take, but if I could get more direction, uh, and Commissioner Holbrook has been very involved, uh, and he and I have, as you would typically expect, he and I have coordinated on this together and will continue to, so I don't need the board to tell me to do that. But it would be helpful to give me a timeline to say, and in Ronnie's case, he suggested, let's go ahead and ask them, to, let's go ahead, please, and make this a priority of cleaning up the bylaws and the reporting relationships. And I'd like to have that done on the eve of, of you hiring a president. That means, it needs, that means it needs to take priority in the next 30 to 60 days. I think, I think that would be good. Do, if they, do, do it prior to hiring a new. Before they give a new president his direction of what he's going to do, exactly. he needs to know whether it's going to be 2020 is going to be part of that. Or right. Not. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I can, and, and if that's the board direction, I can go back and I'll continue to coordinate with Commissioner Holbrook as the ED lays on. I'll talk to the interim uh, president and, and and keep Commissioner Holbrook in the loop and, and, and talk with the current chamber chair. And, and we can talk through that. 
and I'll, I'll work to meet that expectation to get that information back uh, to the board as quickly as possible. And, 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 and one other thing in closing, to my end, because uh, I want to make this really clear. I know everybody <coughs> sitting around this table understands the importance of getting along not only with one another here, but the importance of getting along with people in Raleigh. And for that reason, I probably say too much at Katie, and Kristen does a better job than I do of, of, of massaging everything, you know. But we, I mean, we could literally say some things that shouldn't be said concerning uh, economic development packages. Well, who loses in that? We, because we've burned some bridges in Raleigh, and it's not necessary for us to do that. You know, we <coughs> make a little side remark, well, that we've already made it there. And that's certainly enough said, and that within itself gets a little controversial at times in Raleigh. So, uh, and I, and I, in all honesty, I, I feel for the governor because he's, he's trying his best to do something, and he's got part of a party over here wanting to do something. He's got another party in the middle of the road wanting to do something. He's got another party out here. So there's about three different elements that he's trying to work with and bring together on, a, on an approach to, to uh, economic development. And I always said when he was elected, I said, this is going to be a boom for economic development because of the job he'd done in Charlotte. And then all of a sudden, you know, these other equations enter in. I think our our task is one, try to maintain the relationship we have with them. <coughs> Secondly, maintain the relationships we certainly have with our elected officials that represent us that are in a position to even go up a little higher, a little a bit higher. And third is to try to do what we can do to help them from our end. And uh, sometimes we're not the best at that because we get going the way we want to go as, as a county. But, we need to try to help. And you well, need to help me on this. I, might, I may be wrong, but I think that the one thing that has undermined in the last little bit our biggest economic efforts is when and whoever did it and put us into a tier two. Uh, that, and Chris can speak to this too, that, that hurt us some, Rob. But when you get to like, I'm telling you, you tell me if I'm wrong, but when you get to the one like the tire company, <clears throat> And you get to those real major projects, it's not as big a factor as it is on a lot of the smaller projects. It is a factor on a lot on smaller projects because you lose, you know, you J dig incentives and things like that. You you lose money there that you can put to the table because of jobs, the the the, the capital income, the unemployment rate in your county, all those things which are going good for us, but they elevate you to a tier two and and the, and the bad thing about it in one sense of work we just barely made it into tier two i mean just barely crept into tier two so we're having to pay the price of all the other people that are in tier two and we just barely are there and it it hurts on jd incentives and other things which christian mm -hmm. probably may i ask a question there for example to follow up on one of your questions okay but in some way that we can, that, that y'all can develop with us, okay. Here's tier two versus tier one. This is what we feel like we've lost leverage. And this is maybe something we need to look at to gain a leverage back on the county level. Is that a reasonable to ask? Do you understand what I'm asking? Would you respond to that? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe could you could you pose that question? Again? Okay, I guess what I'm asking is we had a toolbox of working out. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of the tools was we were tier one. Mm -hmm. We lost that. Yeah. How did that really hurt us? What did it do to us? And if that was a major factor, what would be the recommendation that we could do maybe countywide to put something back in that toolbox? that would equal it out? Well, I think the answer, maybe semi-answer that question. And you don't question. have to answer it now, would it right. be? Well, that's too much to ask for a list at a later time. It would be very difficult for me to, 
to quantify or show a direct correlation between a losing a project as a result of being a moving from a tier one to a tier county. Now I can tell you right off the bat, if you look at the one North Carolina grants and you look at the JDIG grants, we can I mean I can put on paper immediately and show you what the requirement how the requirements are very different. Yeah, I guess that's cool. um, which um, to give you an, an idea, JDIG for tier one county 125 jobs must be created. That's kind of the job threshold that, that you're working for in order to be able to qualify for a JDIG. Uh, for Tier 2, it's 150 jobs. And um, it's 110% of the average wage that you must meet in order to get that. So just a little bit um, of a higher threshold in terms of the actual job creation levels that the company must um, meet. But again, I think as we as we mentioned before, once we become the finalist site in North Carolina, those the tier status that structure kind of falls apart. It is not applicable anymore. The state of North Carolina is going to negotiate on our behalf, or should negotiate on our behalf, um, no matter what tier status um, there is. And that's why I was saying the problem was we have a, there's a legislative cap on a lot on the J Day that doesn't give them the flexibility to. To bring forth a very, you know, uh, enhanced, aggressive package that allows us to be competitive with these well, other states. What, so I think what Commissioner Hutchinson said, and I agree with him totally. If if it's not three things, mm -hmm. if it's not but two things, yeah. if it's four things that you can quantify by listing, yeah. I think what the board would like to see is if it's just four minute points, mm -hmm. lay them out there so we can look at them and think through them. Mm -hmm. uh, and see if there's a way that we can figure up some other things. Yeah. So we I know that the state's yeah. overall tax taxation structure, which we I, I don't want to try to even get into that today, but that's become um, yeah. a, uh, an issue for us. Um, that was very much um, conveyed to us by the tax consulting consultants that represented it, represented one of the large tire companies we worked with. And um, again, legislative action would have had to have taken place there to initiate any sort of change relative to that overall tax, taxing environment. And so, um, you know, that's certainly an issue. Um, their incentives don't always drive a project. And so right now what we're hearing from consultants is that work, workforce, skilled workforce, as well as overall cost of doing business are the two main drivers, which obviously financial incentives can contribute to, you know, several years of, of that operational uh, cost of doing business. but. Um, those are two two things. We just we just lost a project recently, primarily due to uh, in in from the consultant um, in terms of the feedback that they gave us, primarily due to what they deemed was a lack of skilled workers here. So they located closer to a metro um, where they felt like they would have a better um, a larger um, Work. labor shed. Um, that consisted of skilled workforce. So, right. you know, that's right off the top of my head. Yeah, you yeah. know, we, we do everything we can when we lose a project, we debrief and we try to, to garner as much feedback from those consultants and that, as we that can. That's what we're looking for when we do lose a project, give us something on yeah. why we lost it. Yeah. And sometimes we never know. Yeah. We're never given yeah. an answer, but we definitely yeah. do our best to. Um, but, but just, I hope that kind of, those are a couple yeah. factors that I yeah. listed right off the top of my well, I, I think, head. I, that, I think you don't have to elaborate a whole lot in what we're asking for. If you can just give us mm -hmm. sure. three or four of the bullet points Absolutely. Uh, and let us carry them around in our chest and see if we can yeah. figure out other ways. To so, quit a couple of things that were mentioned today of, of starting to think out of the box again mm -hmm. and uh, is looking at our workforce and what we can do to improve that and bring, yes. bring skilled people and also, uh, you know, going after every big project that we can, but also being mindful of the other small projects that, that would um, continue to bring businesses yeah. to, to Which we are actively working, we always have, and I think that that goes back to the idea and the strategy uh, that, that we wanted to create a balanced economy. You know, if we have another great recession, you know, we, we did not have that balance in 2008, and so it hit us pretty hard when we saw some of these plants closing in, and historically with the textile industry, falling apart here in Cleveland County. So I think that's the best approach we can take is to have that 
that balanced approach. And creating more relationships with major lead generators, side consultants, brokers, seeing that we're seeing the pipeline shrink with Department of Commerce. And they, you hit right on, on that nail, hit the nail on the head about, you know, ensuring that we're, um, you know, developing those relationships. So. This is all a um, really good discussion. That's what this meeting is for. And economic development was our number one. Um, and that's what we wanted to lead off with. I would just remind the commissioners, and just not, not trying to rush, not trying to cut off any conversation at all. Um, we've got about 12 different topics that we're going to hit, or subtopics we're going to hit in here. And if I'm figuring this right, if we spend as much time on the rest of them as we spend on this one, about eight and a half hours. Oh. <laughs> so, so we're probably going to just. We got, I'm fine, we got the money. I'm fine with that. As long as y'all want to stay, I'm, I'm good. So, but I just kind of want to keep us on track. Any other discussion on that first topic? I'm going to say five or better years ago, we had looked at. Retail incentive because the state will give retail incentives. Now I don't know if it's if it's resistant to it somewhere. I don't sense it from that board or whether it's just some kind of complete lack of it or something. But from what I've been reading about all the new businesses that have been coming to downtown Shelby and <coughs> King Mountain, um, I just don't see why we can't still go back and look at the incentive for retail um, and not have involve any paperwork, so to speak. That, because the way I figured it is so easy is that if a, if a guy wants to add a hundred thousand dollar piece to his business and he goes get the building permit, we, we see that and we have a little scale out there how much incentive he'll get for taxes for a few years. And then if they create any jobs, um, they have to report to the state of North Carolina their employment record. And all we have to do is demand it for that employment record just to look at it. And the, if, if they're not meeting one or the other, then um, they quit getting the incentives to so them. But we even had it to the point where we had some uh, uh, schedules set out what people would get and had them in a regular meeting and then, then everything just disappears so i guess what i'm asking are they resistance on part of this board of doing that or do you, do you not is, is anybody interested in pursuing that's, that's that? been yeah, the last don't have any, yeah. i don't know anything about that that's been the last four that's been the last four years because i was on the board when we discussed mm -hmm. that and if i could make a suggestion on that if that's something this board if, the, if there's a consensus on this board that we would like to look at that. We have a regional task force that we have developed for the county and maybe ask them to look at how that would be implemented if they think it would be and let them look at it. Those are people that we've asked to serve on the committee for retail, uh, to, to build retail, existing retail and, and new it's retail just, inside the county. Fair that retail business cannot benefit from some type of incentive where an, an industry can from local and state based on a job. Ronnie, I think, I think that's big enough. Personally, I agree with you. I think it's big enough that we, we ought to have a more a representative from, one, from the board. Our board, that's, that's one of their primary responsibilities is to sort of look at, charge, Retail and drive it and monitor it and give us reports on it. I can't do it to be honest with you. I don't have the time to do it. Uh, and I think if it's really done right, the person who's trying to drive retail probably don't have time to step over to where I, I try to work. Some so I think we need to think about. It. Well, but again, in I'll, of it. I'll bring it back up. I mean, this we we've, we've set up a retail task force and we've asked. Um, Actually, two, uh, myself and Commissioner Allen, well, um, are are on that, and Commissioner Allen's going to be heading that the the retail task force up for us. We, like I say, we've been talking about this for over five years, and we we absolutely get nowhere. So we either need to 
get some numbers, find out whether it will have an impact on uh, our local businesses. Uh, I, for one, I've ever seen people in Gastonia get all the retail they have over there. So I'm going to ask the chair a loaded question. Sure. You can't be two chiefs. Is she going to be the person in, in charge of the retail element, or are you going to be the person? Uh, uh, let, let me take the let the two of them figure it out. Uh, let me take it. I'll on that. I guess, uh, <laughs> the retail task force is, is coming up really soon, but I'll tell you right up front. Uh, whenever we met the first meeting of uh, the retail task force, which we just initiated a retail task force not too long ago, uh, the first meeting that we had, um, we discussed, and, and to be honest with you, they asked me to serve until we could until we could find someone to lead it, and Commissioner Allen and I have been in discussion, and I think she would do, with her background, with her uh, organizational skills, I think she would do a, an excellent job of it, and uh, I, I, I've asked her, and, and I'm sure the retail task force would, would love for her to uh, lead that task force up. I think she's very well qualified to do that. So, one chief there, and, That's fine. and that would be That's fine. Susan. So, it, and we'll get down to that part in just a few minutes. Can't tell what she's smiling in front of I twisted her on a little bit, so, uh, but I really appreciate it. All right, let's let's move on to the next topic. Uh, uh, and uh, Commissioner Hawkins, that was yours. Uh, plan for future industrial park land purchase. Well, you know, going back to history again, uh, just right over here, we actually lost the large company one time because we didn't have the acreage we needed and it wasn't uh, being certified so to speak. And in the last 10 years or so, uh, not only has uh, Dave Deere uh, worked put together to take a look at parcels of land and then get permission from the commissioners to buy that land until he had this new industrial park, which we have there on paper now. And um, <clears throat> then at one time, the city of Shelby, um, we were try kept trying to tell them that, uh, you know, their tax base is going under and they need to do something. So David took it upon himself to look at their properties and put the properties together and started working with the county and with the city of Shelby and got foothills. Um, most of you, or most people in the room might remember all the contention that took place about the industrial park when it was built at King Mountain. Oh man, I tell you, it was, it was not that drag out fight. I wasn't on there then, it's just here at all show. But I believe that David set a precedence for actually going out and looking at the big maps of the county and seeing where industry may want to locate and start to kind of work to put these parcels together. <coughs> Anybody knows that if uh, you know you're going to build an ABC company here, that the price of that property is going to be high, but he was looking at properties for the future. And then he was going in to get them certified through Diener and all that so that when Clearwater Paper came this time, there was no separate questions about it. So the only reason I asked this to be put on there is, is that this board would give uh, the authority to jail to look. Don't buy anything, just kind of start looking at where the next large tract of land uh, would be necessary for the economic development. And with the new 74 bypass coming through, it would be just about anywhere, but, uh, you know, uh, just like with clear water, you have to have uh, rail, water, sewer, all those kind of things. So just start getting our thoughts together on it because we are running out of properties in these industrial parks that we have. I'm sure there's places for some small places, but uh, if we were wanting to attract a, a large company who owns hundreds of acres, I don't know if we have that much acreage in there. So, um, that's why I'm asking this is to throw the maps out on the table like they did. Let the county manager just say, well, they said before bypass, and this is where we have water, this is where we have sewer. Uh, where, where, do, where do we think that the next 
industry might want to locate and then maybe start looking at putting those parcels together until we have a large track of land that's ready to be ready to go with somebody coming in. And then I add to that. I think over the years we looked at it. It was so hard to get an issue policy to even invest in it. But in the end result, the issue policy didn't come out way ahead over the county of what they read. I think it's time to look at okay. We partner with King Fund, we partner with Shelby. I think the new industrial park should be a partnership like we did the last one. And so the county stepped out and said, okay, we're going to buy the land, we're going to develop it. Then the cities come in and they annex it, they take it over, they reap the benefits. And I think that we should look at the larger areas and say, okay, this is a good possibility. It's located in this township. Then approach that town and say, look, this is what we got going. That's where David could help us because he's still working on a project that Chris will turn it loose on. Right? Mm -hmm. We let go nope, of it. Nope. But anyway, David, David could be some assistance. And I think this is where we got to start partnering to get the existing founded to put some money in to buy the property because, like I say, you look at uh, King Montgomery Park, you look at Foothill Commerce Center, who reached the most benefit from it? And then you know, I did, we, they would fall tooth and nail to get these municipalities just to partner do something with them. So now they see what benefit it is, so they should have some stake in it, I, I think. Uh, well, uh, all I'm, right now, I, I don't disagree with you. The only thing I'm asking is to give the county manager the, um, just put the agency to work for him. They need to try to start identifying parcels of land and a location that might be good for us in the future. In the future. And then, if he finds a large acreage and everything that, uh, that, that he could bring back to us and recommend us, and maybe work like you're talking about, yeah. like purchase property, and then get it certified and everything, so that if a company comes, you know, we can just say, hey, here it is, and it's ready. Right. Uh, we've lost. Um, I know that one large company, I can't think of what it was, lost in South Carolina because it popped every day with a little pop off of Washington Switch. That's okay, yeah, years ago. We didn't have yeah, a yeah, years ago. Years ago, we didn't have anything ready. Yeah. And so they went down the lane. They had something ready. In South Carolina. Yeah. So, and that taught us a lesson at the time. And so we went back and they started adding to that Clorox box. So now we have clear water. But um, if, I mean, and, and I know we need to keep the conversation short, but anyway, just give permission for, yeah, just start looking. I think that's, that's smart yeah. planning. I yeah. think another person to bring to the table with that would be uh, Bill McCarter, with our land use plan. And just, just to revisit it, they can look at it. And, and I, I talked to Bill yesterday, I saw him in a meeting, and talking about the land use plan and asking how much has changed since it was actually done. And, and it's been, it's been, there's been some changes yeah. to it. So he said at some point we probably want to, uh, as, as a body, we probably want to take a look at that again. But I think going back to Lane's plan and doing exactly what you said, look, and that's being proactive. And that's, that's making sure we've got room to grow when we're ready to and when we can. So I think that's very good. Any other discussion on that? Um, uh, economic development marketing campaign. Um, Eddie, I'll uh, uh, run over you. Well, I've already said some of this stuff, and I'll try to cut this brief. I've just been trying to look at other ways that we could help develop our economic development approach, and, and what are other tools that Johnny has referred to? What are what are some other tools we can put in our box to help us in our development? Uh, and they're not just our development, our quality of life for the people and, and the improvement of the county as a whole. What are some things we could look at doing? And um, I think at the appropriate time today, uh, Jeff and I will make reference to a meeting we had concerning the corridor and some discussions that took took place there, which is one of the things that I would look at as, as a tool that could be added into our chest for economic development. Another thing I think is, is the marketing uh, 
we haven't we haven't really done much of that in the past. Uh, is it time for us to do it now? Uh, I'm of the opinion that not a whole lot of other counties really do it. Uh, try to put themselves out out front. Greenwood. Uh, I can remember Greenwood. Uh, what you saw there is not what Greenwood was like 20 years ago. I mean, I, I was in and out of Greenwood right often 20 years ago, and they, they've done a re remarkable job, and I don't blame them for tooting their horn a little bit. Uh, but uh, is it time for us to consider to look at um, trying to market ourselves a little bit better and try to, and I think it's especially critical now that we are trying to become a, a, a travel tourism hub also, that we try to get what we're all out, out to other parts of the state, other parts of the region, uh, from the gun range to the World Series, to the softball tournament, to the swim meets, to the soccer meets, uh, all those type things. Uh, a lot of people don't really know what we're all about. And also, I think that it's a tool that we can use to better tell our community what we're all about. Uh, I, I dare say that a lot of our community would, for example, we were at Kings Mountain and we said, raise your hand if you've been out in the T5 data center park. And then maybe it was two or three hands went up. You know, I, I think maybe we need to do some, look at doing some things to better inform our own folks. Look what's taking place here. Uh, I'll give you a, a, another case in point uh, from this little old seven or eight minute clip that Carl White showed on the World Series over the weekend. I was yeah. talking to him yesterday and he, of course, it tied in veterans and some other things too, so it wasn't just one facet. So he already had inquiries from New York, Indiana, Florida, and other TV stations wanting want permission to use the clip, show the clip. So it, it's another way that we have something that we could develop in economic development, similar to what that was, that we, we could use to show clients when they come in and think. So I think it's just something that we haven't done a whole lot of in the past. Is it time for us to start looking at it? Can we show the video? Have we got that video? Yeah. Abe, would you be okay for us to show that video now? The, the uh, call out video? Uh -huh. This is the one that the American Legion. Yeah. yeah. This was on TV on the week, this past weekend. Okay. Is that is that correct? Uh, that's that's right. Right. Kind of this past weekend. This past weekend. And it will view three times in Charlotte. This thing viewed over six TV stations in the two Carolinas. <laughs> six six million.